2019 paper, this is the first... OK, 2019 paper, this is the first half of the multiple choice. Embryonic stem cells can be used therapeutically to differentiate and replace any... That's under... You know, it's in bold, so it must be important. Damaged or diseased tissue. This is because they are. OK, so they are embryonic stem cells. So we need to get rid of our multipotents. These are wrong. OK. Um, they are pluripotent. That's the whole point about embryonic stem cells. And what that means is that they have all the genes capable of being switched on. Um, they are not all switched on. They are capable of being switched on. Okay, if you think about it, it would not function as a cell if all genes are already switched on. Every single gene. You couldn't have that because, you know, you would have a cell that was producing, say, haemoglobin and also producing insulin and antidiuretic hormone. It would be producing every single thing that normally you would see in specific tissues. But all the genes are there. They just can be switched on. OK. Question two. The table shows uh, the anticodon sequence on tRNA molecules and the specific amino acid each carries. Part of the amino acid sequence of a protein is shown in the diagram. OK, we've got that there. Triplets of DNA nucleotides. Notice this is in bold and yet frequently people skip this. Uh, the code for the sequence of amino acids in this protein are. OK, right. So let's be very clear on this. Right. We have a tRNA. Oh, can't even. Wait, let me do that again. tRNA. OK, anticodon. So the anticodon, let's say the anticodon is CCC. OK, that means that the mRNA codon was or is GGG for it to connect up to, which means the DNA codon that we copied the, the mRNA from was actually CCC. So the shortcut method of this would be looking at this and saying the tRNA codon is the same as the DNA codon. Sorry, tRNA anticodon, to be clear. OK, now to do this as well, what you have to remember is that RNA has uracil, OK, and DNA has thymine. So I'm basically, I could go through this and I'll say, right, OK, proline in DNA would still be CCA. In lysine would still be AAG. Tyrosine, I've got U's in here, but in DNA I would have that at TAT. And isoleucine would be ATT. OK, so if I'm looking for the sequence, I would have CCA lysine at AAG, AAG again, tyrosine at TAT, and isoleucine at ATT. OK, um, and you actually get this on the, well, you have to get as far as the third kind of one, because lysine you obviously got twice. So there we go. See? OK, question three. The graph shows how temperature changes during repeated cycles of a polymerase chain reaction. OK, so we've got time in minutes and then we've got the temperature going up the side. If there were 500 molecules of DNA at the start, predict how many copies there will be after 20 minutes. OK, so there's a kind of trick to this one to start off with. First thing you're going to have to figure out is how long is a cycle. OK, they told us this was repeated cycles. So I need to look for my pattern. My pattern repeat is at four minutes because what we've got here is a long kind of that one and then if you look again the next one does exactly well that's not visible really okay next one does exactly the same pattern over four minutes and then restarts at the next one again so every four minutes is one cycle okay you were asked what happens after 20 minutes so 20 minutes would be five cycles because each one's four minutes okay right i start at 500 after one cycle a thousand two cycles three cycles i get a space i'll go this way uh four cycles and five cycles one two three four five just checking my maths on that one okay so sixteen thousand Question four, DNA from a mother, child and four men, A, B, C and D in a paternity suit was analysed. DNA was amplified using PCR and separated by gel electrophoresis. 
Okay. From the results in the diagram, identify the likely father of the child. Okay. So here is the mum or the mother's bands. Okay. So what we're going to do, first of all, is get rid of the mum as an issue with the child. Okay. So this band from child must have come from mum. And this band from child must have come from mum as well because they are matching up. So what I'm looking for is a father that can give these two band points. Okay, so B potentially in the running, but then the bottom one doesn't fit. E is out, C is out, uh, D. Oh no, C's got that one as well. So uh, matching up. Sorry, trying to make it kind of clear on this one. So correct answer for paternity suit on this one is D. Question five. Table shows three examples of gene transfer. Which of these examples illustrates horizontal gene transfer? Now, I think this is really sneaky because they've drawn one of these the other way around from where you would expect it if it was not horizontal. Okay, this here, this is vertical transmission because this is the bacteria passing on to the next generation of bacteria. Okay, this is vertical because the mice are passing on to the next generation of mice. So both of these are vertical. This one, however, this is horizontal in number three, because what you've got is it passing it to another bacteria of the same generation, not passing it down to the next split generation. Okay, so which of them is horizontal gene transfer? It is only actually number three. Okay, sickle cell anemia is a human condition that affects haemoglobin. Reducing the body's ability to carry oxygen, it's caused by a mutation that changes one adenine base to thymine. This results in one amino acid in haemoglobin being changed. The mutation that causes sickle cell anemia is, okay, get rid of translocation straight away, okay, because we are looking at a change of one base, okay, and there are only three different ones that are potentially in the running for this as single mutations, okay, uh, within a sequence. Substitution, insertion, and deletion. Changes one adenine base to a thymine. Take one out, swap in another. It has got to be substitution. Also, the fact it only results in one amino acid being changed tells you it cannot be these ones because these ones are frame shift. Changing everything downstream of where you've done the damage. Okay, question seven. I'm just trying to get all of this on here. Um, subspecies of the wren have evolved in different island areas in Scotland. The graph shows averages of body length, wing length, and body mass for wrens from the islands of St Kilda, Shetland, and Faroe. Okay, it's not particularly complicated graphs, but there are three of them you have to move between, which is what makes it your level. Okay, which of the following conclusions can be drawn from this data? Shetland and Faroe wrens have a greater average wing length and body mass than St Kilda wrens. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we are looking at average wing length. So your average wing length is here. Okay, and what they're saying is they have Shetland and Faroe have a greater average wing length than St Kilda. That's true. Okay, and body mass than St Kilda. So your body mass is over here and that is true as well. So the answer is A, but just to run the rest to be sure, St Kilda and Faroe wrens have a greater average body length and wing length than Shetland wrens. Okay, so we're looking at the body length, um, so this one over here. Okay, and we said St Kilda and Faroe have a greater average body length um, than Shetland. Well, they are definitely well longer than the Shetland, okay. Uh, wing length, however, the Shetland one here is is longer. Oh, sorry, wing length here. Uh, the Shetland is is longer than the St Kilda, um, which is what they didn't see. Okay, so not that one. Uh, St Kilda ends are smaller in each characteristic than the other two. Um, well, we've got this one up here again that we'd already highlighted. So that's not true. Feral wrens are larger in each characteristic than the other two. Um, again, we are looking at this one here for that, and that's actually quite nasty 
because it's exactly the same, so therefore they're not larger. Um, so A is still absolutely, we're happy, is correct. Okay, question eight. Goldenrod gallflies lay eggs on the stems of several plant species. The newly hatched larvae then burrow into the plant, causing the growth of a mass of plant gall round about them. The larvae live and feed inside the gall. The size of gall is affected by two different selection pressures. Larvae in smaller galls are more likely to be predated by wasps. Larvae in larger galls are more likely to be predated by birds. Which diagram represents the type of selection affecting gall size? Okay, so you've basically been given all four possibilities. We've got two directional selections going on here, um, a stabilising and a disruptive. Okay, so what you've got to think is, right, okay, if this is the, the start, okay, and this is this is your goal size, okay, so if this is the range, these guys are going to be eaten, okay, um, because what they said is that uh, larger goals are more likely to be predated by birds, so we are selecting against the top end, okay, and if that was all we were doing, then you would expect it to move to being smaller, so we would expect a directional where it shifts like this, okay? But it's not just the small that is the problem. It also, sorry, large. In the smaller one, it says they're more likely to be predated by wasps. So this end also has a problem. So if this was the only problem, then again, you would expect it to shift to larger like this. But instead, what we've got is the top is not, this is not good and this is not good. So it's actually becoming narrower this one here okay and um, D is just wrong we are D would be selecting for the large and the small but not against the middle okay question 9 a little phylogenetic tree the diagram shows the divergence of lineages in the evolution of some primates we've got time and millions of years before the presence working back the way that way okay so this is the the longest time ago um, which row in the table identifies the time that the last common ancestor of vervet monkeys and humans existed and the number of other species that shared this common ancestor? I think highlighters work best for this one, okay? So we're looking for humans, so let's just track the human one down, okay? Uh, this highlighter is not the best actually on these ones. Okay, so I'm tracking the human all the way back down to the kind of last bit that we have information on okay and then we were looking for the vervet monkey okay here we go so i'm looking for when they connect wherever they connect i'm like oh right here this was my last common ancestor of these two okay so i then need to read that across um it's quite simple okay so that last common ancestor for these two was at 30 million years ago okay and then I'm looking for how many of them share that common ancestor. So I need it, the branching back up the way from 30. How many of these connect back to here? So the chimpanzee does, the gorilla, the orangutan, the baboon, and the macaque. One, two, three, four, five. And correct answer is A. Okay, question 10. Diagram represents the conversion of starch into maltose. Which row on the table identifies the type of reaction shown and whether it requires or releases energy? Okay, so we are taking a large molecule and breaking it into smaller molecules. That means that we are looking at something which is catabolic. Okay, and the definition of that is that it also releases energy. Okay, because what we've done is, like, so the bond energy in here and the bond energy in here, this must go somewhere so it gets released. Okay. Um, question 11. The effect of temperature on the metabolic rate of a snail was investigated using the respirometer. Um, we've got a kind of standard low-tech respirometer here. Experiment was carried out at 10, 15, 20 and 25 degrees C. At each temperature, the tap was left open for 15 minutes, then closed and readings were taken from the scale every two minutes. Identify how the dependent variable was measured. Okay, so that's the thing that we are trying to actually look at okay um, so it's not temperature change because that is the independent variable not the dependent it is not heat production because there is nothing to do with that at all like, it's a bit random okay so what we're left with is either oxygen consumption or carbon dioxide production okay 
Now, the, any carbon dioxide which is being produced is being absorbed. What we're actually measuring is how much oxygen has been taken up and into the snail. Okay, so it is oxygen consumption. Question 12. Which row in the table identifies the temperature monitoring centre and the location of an effector in the thermoregulation in mammals? Okay, so temperature reg monitoring centre, you just need to know, is in the hypothalamus. Okay, it wouldn't make sense to have it in your skin because your skin is actually being used to cool down and heat up to try and regulate the temperature. So, and it's also on the outside of you. And really what we need to do is monitor our core temperature where it's absolutely essential. And hypothalamus is up in this kind of centre of your brain. Um, and kind of same argument with nerves as there is for skin. They're everywhere and that's not necessarily helpful. Okay, the effector is the thing that actually changes what's going on. So that is the skin. The nerves don't actually... Um, do the job they just tell stuff to do the job okay so um correct answer here is c question 13 uh, the gila monster is a species of lizard that lives in north america its internal temperature is dependent on the environmental temperature okay this tells you or should in, in straight away you're going that's a conformer okay uh, which row in the table identifies metabolic cost to and the range of ecological niches of the Gila monster? So if you've got as far as saying conformer, then what you should be recognising is the metabolic cost of that is low. Okay, because I'm not actually having to burn lots of energy to regulate an internal temperature. Okay, but what this also means is that they don't have particularly wide ecological range. They can only live exactly where the temperature is right for them to live. So it's narrow. So 